so we shall uh, start uh, today about this jordan canonical form jordan canonical form so uh, remember that a square matrix of size n by n is similar to a matrix B of size n by n if and only if there exists an invertible matrix, invertible matrix P of size n by n such that P inverse A P is equal to B. So, in the previous lecture we have seen that not all square matrices are similar to diagonal matrices or in other words not all square matrices are diagonalizable. But here we shall see that every square matrix is similar to a matrix that is nearly diagonal. So, nearly diagonal means it is of the form that the diagonal entries besides the diagonal entries the super diagonal entries are not 0 and they are equal to 1 at the most that is we are talking about that every square matrix is similar to a matrix that is in Jordan canonical form. So, here we shall define a Jordan block that for any scalar alpha a Jordan block of size k denoted by j k alpha is a matrix is a k by k matrix of the form this j k alpha it is of the form that the diagonal entries are alpha and the super diagonal entries they are equal to 1 that is the super diagonal entries are equal to 1. So, this is called a Jordan block and then next we shall define a Jordan block matrix or a Jordan canonical form. Our next definition is this. that a square matrix a square matrix A is called a Jordan block matrix Jordan block matrix or in Jordan canonical form Jordan canonical form if it is di it is a diagonal matrix diagonal matrix or any one of any of the 
following four that is here this is a diagonal matrix and this j k 1 alpha 1 like this j k r alpha r or the it is of this form that j k 1 alpha 1 up to this j k r alpha r where this D is a diagonal matrix. Of course, the off diagonal entries or these blocks, off diagonal blocks, they are all 0 blocks. Basically, this is uh, these two are block matrices that the diagonal blocks are like this and off diagonal blocks are 0 and here D is a diagonal matrix. So, we shall show that here we shall show that every square matrix square matrix is similar to a Jordan block matrix. So, let us see some example of Jordan block matrices. Let us look at this example. Here we consider the matrices, consider the matrices. A 1 is like this, it is of size 5 by 5 and entries are 2 1 0 0 0 0 2 1 0 0 0 0 2 0 0 0 0 2 1 and this 0 0 0 and this 2. So, here this matrix A 1 is in Jordan form that is a Jordan block matrix or it is in matrix or it is in Jordan canonical form, canonical form because it is of the form a 1 is of the form that here we can say this as this first this 3 by 3 sub matrix that forms J 3 2 and this this one this 2 by 2 sub matrix that forms J 2 2 and the remaining are 0 blocks, but this matrix if we consider A 2 be like this, this is 2 0 1 0 0 2 1 0 0 0 2 1 0 0 0 2 uh, is not in Jordan canonical form in Jordan canonical form because 
because of this entry that because of because of the third entry in first row. So, this is not a super diagonal entry and this is not equal to 0. So, therefore, this is not in Jordan canonical form. So, here we shall discuss that how to find Jordan canonical form of every square matrix and for that we shall define uh, another terminology that is called generalized eigenvector. So, here we define generalized eigenvectors of square matrices. So, here all we consider let A be a square matrix over a field F and let lambda be an eigenvalue of A, then a non-zero vector, a non-zero vector x in F n is a generalized, generalized eigenvector of A corresponding to lambda corresponding to lambda if of course, this uh, x is a generalized eigenvector of uh, we take type m type m of a corresponding to lambda if this a minus lambda i whole to the power m into this x this is equal to 0, but a minus lambda i whole to the power m minus 1 x is not equal to 0. So, this is called a type m generalized eigenvector of A corresponding to lambda. So, notice that type 1 generalized eigenvectors are ordinary vectors. So, notice that type 1 generalized eigenvectors are ordinary eigenvectors. So, this is why this name generalized is there. Then we shall see here a chain generated by a generalized eigenvector. So, that is important here for finding Jordan canonical form. So, we get this chain generated by a generalized eigenvector and here we consider that uh, we consider x m let x m be a generalized eigenvector of type m of a matrix A, square matrix A with respect to eigenvalue lambda. Then we get a chain that is generated by x m. 
this generalized eigenvector x m. And here we define the chain be like this, let x m minus 1 is equal to a minus lambda i x m x m minus 2 is a minus lambda i whole square times x m and that is equal to a minus lambda i times x m minus 1. In this fashion, we get this x 2 be a minus lambda i whole to the power m minus 2 x m or this is equal to a minus lambda i times x 3 and finally, we get this x 1 x 1 is equal to a minus lambda i whole to the power m minus 1 times x m and that is equal to a minus lambda i times x 2. So, this set S consisting of vectors x 1, x 2, up to x m minus 1 x m is called the chain generated by x m. So, this chain generated by x m satisfies some properties and uh, we shall uh, list those properties here. So, properties of this chain are like this. First property is that every x j, uh, well every x j is non-zero, every x j, j from 1 to up to m is non-zero vector, is non-zero vector. This follows from definition of this generalized eigenvalue x m, because x m is a generalized eigenvalue of type m. So, this is important and this second property is that every x j here this x j x j is a generalized eigen vector of type j of the matrix a type j or corresponding to lambda. So, every x j is a generalized eigenvector of type j corresponding to lambda. So, then another important property here is uh, this one that this sequence uh, consisting of this uh, sequence of vectors x 1, x 2 to x m or this set S, this is a linearly independent set the chain S of vectors x 1, x 2 to up to x m is a linearly independent set, linearly independent set and this property one can also check easily. Then next we shall see using this generalized eigenvectors, how to get a basis for a matrix A that is called K 
canonical basis for a matrix. So, here we shall write those results, known results. We shall use these results for finding Jordan canonical form of a matrix. So, it says that every n by n matrix A possesses n linearly independent generalized eigenvectors, n linearly independent or generalized generalized eigenvectors and in short forms we write them as leaks l i g e s linearly independent generalized eigenvectors this leaks here this leaks is called a canonical basis for a a canonical basis for this matrix a so uh, let us take this be first result then the second result is like this a generalized eigen vectors corresponding to distinct eigen values are linearly independent so it says that generalized eigen vectors corresponding to corresponding to distinct eigen values distinct eigen values are linearly independent this property is like this properties of ordinary eigen vectors so another important property is that if lambda is an eigen value of a with algebraic algebraic multiplicity multiplicity k then a will have k legs or k linearly independent k linearly independent generalized eigen vectors or legs so corresponding to every eigen value that means if the algebraic multiplicity of lambda is k then we get k linearly independent generalized eigen vectors corresponding to lambda here this generalized eigen vectors are corresponding to lambda so this is very useful so next let us see how to find a canonical basis for a matrix for a square matrix and this is important method to find a canonical basis for a square matrix A. So, here we consider that A B 
a matrix of size n by n. So, here first step is we find all eigenvalues of A, find all eigenvalues of A, say lambda 1, lambda 2 up to lambda k with algebraic multiplicity, algebraic multiplicity m 1, m 2 up to m k respectively. So, then next for this every i from 1 to up to k, we find find the smallest positive integer p i such that this a minus lambda i i whole to the power p i has rank n minus m i. So, after getting this p i for every k or for every l from 1 to up to this p i let rho l be defined like this that rho l is defined like this. This is equal to rank of a minus lambda i multiplied by i whole to the power l minus 1 minus rank of a minus lambda i i whole to the power l. Of course, here we consider this we take this a minus lambda i i whole to the power 0 be the identity matrix. So, this uh, rho l we have defined this plays important role that this then this uh, matrix A, then in the canonical basis, canonical basis of A, there are rho L leaks linearly independent generalized eigen vectors of type L corresponding to corresponding to eigen value lambda i. Then next we explain next we explain the method for finding a canonical basis for A by taking an example, by taking an example below and this example in this example we consider find a canonical 
basis for this matrix A is like this 4 0 1 0 2 2 3 0 minus 1 0 2 0 4 0 1 2 so this is 0 so here we find a canonical basis for a in the following manner uh, let b be a canonical basis for a so first we compute the eigen values the eigen values of this matrix A are lambda 1 is 3, lambda 2 is 2 with uh, multiplicity with multiplicities and that is algebraic only algebraic multiplicity m 1 is 2 and m 2 is 2. So, then next we shall uh, compute this values of p i and those rho l. So, for that first we consider the first eigen value consider the eigen value lambda 1 is 3. So, for this case this value of one can check that value of p 1 will be 2 one can check this and this value of rho 2 is 1 and rho 1 is 1. So, this means that this b contains one generalized eigenvector say x 1 of type 1 and one generalized eigenvector say x 2 of type 2 or in other words this x 1 x 2 is a chain actually corresponding to this uh, x 2 this is a leak corresponding to eigen value lambda 1 corresponding to lambda 1. Here we shall find out this generalized eigenvectors x 1 and x 2. So, in this manner uh, well x 1 is actually a minus 3 i times this x 2 and this a minus 3 i whole square x 2 that is equal to 0 this x 2 is a generalized eigenvector of type 2 this therefore, this x 2 satisfies this equation and here we consider x 1 be this eigenvector generalized eigenvector of type 1. Then for finding this x 2 we get this or we get this a 
minus 3 i whole square one can compute is like this. It is the matrix first row is all 0, second row is minus 3 1 minus 4 0, then 0 0 0 minus 1 0 2 1 and here for x 2 we can see the, the entries be x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 this is equal to 0. Here we are considering this x 2 is this vector x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 or we get uh, this system is like this or we get two equations in this system that minus 3 x 1 plus x 2 minus 4 x 3 is equal to 0 and this minus x 1 plus 2 x 3 plus x 4 is equal to 0. So, x 2 is, is, is a solution of this system. So, we can take or also we can find x 2 can be taken as this x 2 satisfies these two equations and we can consider this or we can solve for this also. So, let us take this x 2 be like this that it is the vector 1 3 0 1. So, next we can find this x 1 is from x 2 and it is like this x 1 is a minus 3 i times x 2. So, one can compute it well uh, we are considering this be our capital x 2. So, we get this x 1 be the vector 1 minus 1 minus 1 3. So, now we have got this x 1 and x 2. So, next we shall find out uh, generalized eigenvectors for the second eigenvalue consider the eigenvalue lambda 2 and that is 2. So, for this we can see that one can check this value of p 2 is equal to 1 and value of rho 1 is equal to 2. So, this means that uh, there are two generalized eigenvectors of this means that there are two generalized eigenvectors of type 1 corresponding to lambda 2 corresponding to lambda 2 and since these generalized eigenvectors are type 1 they are ordinary eigenvectors corresponding to lambda 2. So, we find two linearly independent eigenvectors uh, corresponding to lambda 2. So, two linearly independent two linearly independent eigenvectors corresponding to lambda 2 one can find uh, this as say one is y 1 and one may take this y 1 as 0 1 0 0 say this one is y 1 and this z 1 
that one can take as 0 0 0 1. So, now this canonical basis corresponding to A be like this, this B consisting of y 1, z 1, x 1, x 2 is a canonical basis for the matrix A. Of course, there may be several canonical basis corresponding to a matrix A. So, then next we find Jordan canonical form of a square matrix. Now, we are ready to find Jordan canonical form of a square matrix. So, the method is like this method to find Jordan method to find Jordan canonical form of a square matrix A of size n. So, the steps are like this. First step is we find a canonical basis S or maybe B we can say a find a canonical basis B of this matrix A. Second step is that we form a matrix M that we say modal matrix form a modal matrix M for A taking vectors in B as columns such that of course, the chains consisting of single vector appear at the beginning at the beginning at the beginning of a uh, at the beginning of this matrix m and second condition is that each chain appear in M in order of increasing type. We will take one example and explain this of course. So, now this M inverse A M is the Jordan form of this matrix A. This is the Jordan, this is the Jordan canonical form of matrix A. So, next we will take one example. For example, we consider consider the matrix in the previous example. 
that is A is the matrix this one that four two four sorry four zero one zero two two three zero minus one zero two zero four zero one two. So for this matrix you recall that we have already got a canonical basis. So, remember that uh, that canonical basis we have got. So, now we can form modal matrix from uh, the canonical basis canonical basis B of A, we form the modal matrix M S. M is consist of that Y 1, because this is consist of this chain is consist of only one vector that is y 1. So, j 1 is also only one vector in the chain and then x 1 and x 2. So, here this x 1 and x 2 form a chain and we have to write in their increasing type. That means, x 1 is type 1 and x 2 is type 2. So, therefore, we get this modal matrix M be like this y 1 we have taken a 0 1 0 0 z 1 we have taken that 0 0 0 1 and x 1 is 1 minus 1 minus 1 3 and x 2 is 1 3 0 1. So, now one we can check that now one checks that this m inverse a m is consist of the matrix of the form that it is consisting of 2 0 0 0 0 2 0 0 0 0 3 1 0 0 0 3 and this is the this matrix is the Jordan canonical form of the matrix A. That is A is similar to a Jordan block matrix. So, here we have shown that every square matrix is similar to a nearly diagonal matrix or a matrix in Jordan canonical form. So, next we will uh, discuss an important theorem of this linear algebra and in particular uh, this is an important theorem theorem of matrix theory to complete this vector space part. So, here we discuss about this Cayley Hamilton theorem. Cayley Hamilton theorem. So, this is an important theorem in matrix theory. This is 
an important theorem in matrix theory. So, to complete this uh, vector space part, we discuss about this theorem, this is an important theorem. So, this Kelly Hamilton theorem states like this, this is Kelly Hamilton theorem that every square matrix, every square matrix satisfies its own characteristic equation. That is, if the characteristic equation of this matrix A, A of size n is chi A lambda is A 0 plus A 1 lambda up to A n minus 1 lambda to the power n minus 1 plus lambda to the power n is equal to 0 then this chi a a is equal to 0 this chi a a will be a 0 times identity matrix plus a 1 a up to a n minus 1 a to the power n minus 1 plus a to the power n is this 0 matrix this is n by n 0 matrix. So, let us see one example here. Let A be the matrix 1, 2, 4, 3. Its characteristic equation is chi A lambda characteristic equation is lambda square minus 4 lambda minus 5 is equal to 0. So, now we shall find out chi a a and that is equal to a square minus 4 a minus 5 i and it is the matrix that 9 8, 16, 17, minus 4, 8, 16, 12, minus 5, 0, 0, 5 and one can check that this is equal to the 0 matrix of size 2. So, using this Kelly Hamilton theorem, we can find higher power of matrices, we can also compute inverse of a matrix. So, this Kelly Hamilton theorem is very useful. Let us see one example in support of this. So, using uh, here we consider A B the matrix 1, 1, minus 1, 3. So, using Kelly Hamilton theorem, Kelly Hamilton theorem, uh, determine A inverse if exists and also sixth power of A. 
So, we can use this Kelly Hamilton. Uh, note that determinant of A is not equal to 0. So, A inverse exists. So, here a characteristic polynomial of this matrix A is lambda square minus 4 lambda plus 4. So, from Kelly Hamilton theorem, from Kelly Hamilton theorem, we get that chi a a that is equal to a square minus 4 a plus 4 times identity matrix is 0 or from here we get that this a square minus 4 a is equal to minus 4 times identity or on simplifying we get that i is equal to a times i minus 1 by 4 a or this a inverse is the matrix i minus 1 by 4 a. So, now we know the matrix A and we know the mat this identity matrix. So, we can find the inverse of A and it is one can compute that it is like this 3 by 4 minus 1 by 4, 1 by 4, 1 by 4. So, to find uh, a to the power 6 to find a to the power 6 we divide lambda to the power 6 by uh, this equation that characteristic polynomial of uh, this matrix A and it is lambda square minus 4 lambda plus 4 that is we get that lambda to the power 6 is equal to lambda square minus 4 lambda plus 4 multiplied by lambda to the power 4 plus 4 lambda cube plus 12 lambda square plus 32 lambda plus 80 and plus 192 lambda minus 320. So, since this matrix A satisfies this characteristic polynomial, so if we put the value of A in place of lambda, we get this first term is equal to 0 and therefore, we get A to the power 6 is equal to 192 times A minus 320 times identity and one can compute that this matrix is like given by minus 128, 192 minus 192 and 256. This is how we have computed sixth power of this matrix A and using in this way that uh, I mean we can use Kelly Hamilton theorem in this fashion and find higher power of matrices and also inverse of matrices and this is lots of application. So, uh, we stop this lecture here and that is all. Thank you.